During World War II, Nazi Germany conducted many experiments with military equipment. After its completion, many secret laboratories and testing grounds of the Third Reich were discovered. Many super-weapon projects have been revealed, both crazy and fantastic, as well as very real and almost realized. And in this video, you will learn about eight crazy projects of the Third Reich. The first project is Heavy Gustav Andorra. Gustav Andorra is a super-heavy railway-mounted artillery gun, named after the director of the company and the wife of the designer. The weapon was intended to destroy fortifications on the borders of Germany, with Belgium and France, as well as the Maginot Line, the most powerful fortifications that existed at that time. However, the first gun was built only in 1941. The weight of the gun was 1,350 tons, the height was almost 12 meters, which is comparable to a three-story house, width 6 meters and length 42 meters. The barrel had a caliber of 807 millimeters, but after firing due to ultra-high pressure and friction, it increased by 3 millimeters, and its length was 32 meters. The weight of the shells for the gun was 7 tons, and the firing range reached 50 kilometers, the shell itself could penetrate 8 meters of concrete. The weapon was first used during the assault on Sevastopol in 1942. Dora was brought in in the strictest secrecy piecemeal. It was assembled on site by a team of 20 engineers. The gun was guarded from the air by fighters and several units on the ground. The Dora was additionally protected from air attacks by a reinforced air defense artillery division of 400 people. In total, more than 4,000 people were involved in guarding and maintaining the gun. Dora caused damage to two important forts and an ammunition depot in Sevastopol. The roar from her shots was heard 40 kilometers away. After Sevastopol, Dora was sent to Leningrad and from there to Essen for repairs. The second time it was used was in 1944 to suppress the Warsaw Uprising. Later, during the retreat, the Nazis also took Dora out in parts. It was not possible to capture it entirely. Dora and Heavy Gustav were blown up by the Germans in Bavaria, shortly before the arrival of Soviet troops. The second project is the Karl Mortar. The Karl Mortar is the largest and heaviest self-propelled mortar in the world. A total of seven such examples have been built since 1940. They were used to storm fortresses and heavily fortified enemy positions. The mortar turned out to be truly huge, with a length of more than 11 meters and a height of over 4 meters. Carl weighed 124 tons. Moreover, the length of the barrel with a caliber of 600 millimeters is only 5 meters and only twice as long as the projectile itself. The elevation angle of the trunk is up to 70 degrees. The result was a classic mortar, a very short barrel, but a powerful projectile and a steep firing trajectory. In the horizontal plane, the barrel could only rotate within a sector of 4 degrees. For firing, light and heavy concrete piercing projectiles weighing 1700 and 2170 kilograms, as well as high explosive projectiles weighing 1250 kilograms, were developed. The concrete piercing projectile was fired at an initial speed of 220 meters per second and pierced a concrete wall up to 3.5 meters thick or a steel slab 450 millimeters thick. The initial speed of the high explosive projectile was 283 meters per second. They fired at a range of 6,700 meters. The maximum flight time of the shells was 49 seconds. The rate of fire of the gun was one shot every 10 minutes. The mortar was driven by a Daimler-Benz engine with a power of 580 horsepower and accelerated the extremely heavy vehicle to 10 kilometers per hour. Mortars were first used in combat conditions on June 22, 1941 during the storming of the Brest Fortress. On August 6, 1941, mortars were used during the siege of Sevastopol together with the super-heavy railway artillery gun Dora. In August 1944, a mortar shelled Warsaw during the suppression of the Warsaw Uprising. The German mortar Karl is the last of a line of super-heavy guns and the last combat unit in a series of self-propelled mortars. 
it's a clear example of the hopeless impasse into which the military thought of the Third Reich reached. The third project is the Rat Tank. The Rat is a super heavy tank, the project of which was developed in Germany in 1943, under the leadership of Edward Groth. The Rat Tank was supposed to weigh up to 1,000 tons, the crew number was up to 36 people. The tank was very big. Its length was 35 meters, width 14 meters, and height 11 meters, which is comparable to the Dora gun, which occupies the first position in this rating. The tank's armor reached up to 400 millimeters in some places. It was also planned to build a garage into it, which would house two BMW R12 reconnaissance motorcycles, several storage rooms, and a bathroom. The main armament of the tank was two 283mm caliber naval guns mounted in a rotating turret, located in the front of the hull. In the bow of the tank, there were two 15mm machine guns. The tank was also equipped with eight Flag 38 anti-aircraft guns in two quad mounts. This monster should be powered by eight 20-cylinder marine engines with a capacity of 2,000 horsepower or two 12-cylinder man marine engines with a power of 8,400 horsepower each. The tank's cruising range was supposed to be about 190 kilometers, and the speed was up to 40 kilometers per hour, which is very unlikely. However, an insurmountable obstacle for the rat was the lack of technology, production equipment, and the common sense of Spear, who at the beginning of 1943 closed all land cruiser projects. You can call all these developments miracle weapons in quotation marks. Combat vehicles with such enormous weight were impossible to transport. The bridges could not support them, and the tanks themselves would easily get stuck in the mud and would be completely defenseless against aircraft. The fourth project is the Hanabu Flying Saucers. Today a lot is known about the developments of the Third Reich in the field of flying saucers, but over the years the questions have not diminished. This project involved the creation of huge flying saucers that would take off vertically. The project itself is shrouded in great mystery, but as indicated in some open sources, the Hanabu 2, which took off in 1944, had enviable characteristics. It was 26 meters in diameter. The perpetual motion machine Pichianator 70 was 23 meters in diameter. The speed of the device could reach about 6,000 kilometers per hour. The Austrian scientist and inventor Walter Stauberg worked on the creation of engines for Hanabu. Huge allocations were allocated for these developments and were under the constant control of Himmler himself. According to calculations, the probable duration of the flight was over 55 hours. The crew consisted of nine people and 11 passengers, and was provided with everything necessary for the duration of the flight. To hit the enemy, four 270mm caliber gun turrets were installed on the flying ship, and the payload capacity was about 100 tons. In 1944, the Germans were going to start mass production of this aircraft, but soon after the tests, even newer versions of these machines appeared. Until now, the fate of this development is unknown, just as there is no documentary evidence of these facts. Photos that appeared once upon a time in the press with articles were recognized as fakes. The fifth project is V2. The V2 is a fairly successful implementation of the world's first long-range ballistic missile, developed by German designer Werner von Braun and adopted by the Wehrmacht at the end of World War II. The rocket was single-stage, had a liquid rocket engine with a turbopump fuel supply, and was launched vertically. During the active part of the trajectory, a revolutionary autonomous guidance system come into action. The target coordinates were entered into the onboard analog computer before launch. Gyroscopes installed on the rocket controlled its spatial position throughout the flight, and any deviation from the given trajectory was corrected by four graphite gas dynamic rudders placed in the jet stream of the engine along the periphery of the nozzle. The cruising flight speed was 5,940 kilometers per hour. The flight range reached 320 kilometers, and the trajectory altitude was up to 90 kilometers. The warhead could hold up to 800 kilograms of amatol. 
The first launch took place in March 1942, and the first combat launch on September 8, 1944. The number of combat missile launches was 3,225. The shelling was mainly carried out on the territory of Great Britain, and in particular the city of London. V-2 is the first object in history to perform a suborbital spaceflight, reaching an altitude of 188 kilometers during a vertical launch. This happened in 1944. After the war, the V-2 was the prototype for the development of the first ballistic missiles of the USA, USSR, and other countries. The sixth project is Solar Cannon. This is a colossal orbital mirror that could burn entire cities and drain reservoirs with its beam. Similar developments became known in 1945, when the works of the scientist Hermann Oberth fell into the hands of the Allies. The idea was to build an orbital station and place a huge mirror on it. This mirror was supposed to focus and reflect sunlight, striking enemies with a deadly solar beam directly from space. They planned to assemble the station in space from separate modules, which for example, was later implemented in the ISS. Artificial gravity was to be provided through rotation, and the delivery of modules to orbit would be carried out by the highly refined V-2. The operation of the station was supposed to be supported by steam generators powered by solar energy. Inside gardens with thousands of pumpkins that actively absorb carbon dioxide and provide the station with oxygen. But the most important element of the complex is a monstrous reflector with an area of about 9 square kilometers. The surface of the mirror was planned to be coated with sodium metal, a soft silvery alkali metal. In a state of inactivity, the parabolic mirror was supposed to reflect sunlight to protect the station crew. With the help of rocket engines, the installation could be deployed so as to focus the sun's ray on a relatively small area of the Earth. It was believed that this would be enough to destroy entire cities. But there is still no evidence that the Germans were seriously working on this project. The story of the superweapon was told to the Americans who occupied Hillerslepen by local scientists. It is worth noting that the first information about this fantastic weapon appeared in the American press in 1945, on the eve of the complete surrender of Germany. It is possible that all this was just part of the propaganda needed by the Allies at this time. The seventh project is Horton H-09. The Horton Ho-9 is an experimental jet aircraft developed in Germany during World War II and designed by the Horton brothers since 1931. Horton Ho-9 was the first turbojet aircraft built using an aerodynamic design, a flying wing. Thanks to its shape, the bomber was barely noticeable to radar during the Second World War, and in principle, could fly to the coast of Britain without arousing suspicion among enemy aircraft. The plane did not have a fuselage as such. The thickness of the center section was sufficient to accommodate the pilot and engine. There was no vertical tail. Course control was carried out by spoilers mounted on the wings. The plane was powered by two turbojet engines. The plane's crew consisted of only one pilot. The maximum speed reached 1,000 km per hour, and the maximum flight range was 1,000 km. The practical flight ceiling reached 16 km. On March 1, 1944, the first flight took place in Göttingen. In total, there were six aircraft in production at various stages of production, and components for 20 aircraft were also ordered for the needs of fighter aircraft. By this time, two planes were already taking off. On April 14, 1945, one Horton was captured by the U.S. Army. It was dismantled and transported to America. In the USA, the aircraft was thoroughly tested, and this allowed the Americans to create several aircraft without tails, one of the latest such vehicles is the B-2 Strategic Bomber. The eighth project is Type 21 submarines. These submarines are a series of ultra-modern German diesel-electric submarines from the Second World War. These boats were the first in the world to use ready-made sections in mass production. The structurally sound body had a modular design and consisted of nine separate sections. The frames were located not inside, but outside the durable hull, which made it possible to use the internal space more efficiently. The robust body 
was assembled entirely by welding. The maximum diving depth of the submarine reached 220 meters, the estimated destructive depth was 330 meters, the underwater displacement was 2,114 tons, the surface speed was 15 knots, and the underwater speed was 17. The power plant included two inline diesel engines manufactured by MAN, each with a capacity of 2,000 horsepower. Two main electric motors, each with a capacity of 2,500 horsepower. In addition to them, the boats had two electric silent running motors with a power of 113 horsepower. Using silent running engines at a speed of 6 knots, the submarine could move for 48 hours. The submarine actually did not produce any noise perceptible to hydroacoustic equipment. The submarine included torpedo and anti-aircraft weapons. The crew consisted of 58 people, and 49 sleeping places were provided for them. Since 1943, 118 ships were under construction, and only two boats were able to take part in hostilities. Series 21 submarines influenced the entire post-war submarine shipbuilding industry. The project featured a number of revolutionary innovations, electromechanical loading of torpedo tubes, a sonar system that allows attack without visual contact, enlarged batteries, a rubber coating that makes it difficult for sonars to operate, and a bubble curtain device. For the first time, submarines were designed for scuba diving throughout the entire autonomous voyage. The miracle weapon of the Third Reich could hardly have changed the course of World War II. Already due to the complexity of the design of most of these projects, and in conditions of limited resources, it was impossible to establish mass production of one or another retaliation weapon. However, we must say, thanks to the German megalomania and passion for such epic experiments, the more time and resources they poured into these crazy projects, the less they had left for actually effective weapon systems. If you liked this video, please give it a like and write your opinion in the comments. See you in the next video.